My name is Crystal Brown, and I'll be reading Lance Loud, 13 Portraits Hand Colored. The name of my story is Mirrors. In life, I meet a lot of different people every day. I meet them at work, school, or in the grocery store, but I also meet different versions of myself throughout the years. There is an innocent me, heartbroken me, happy me, and many more. A clever way to picture this is using Lance Loud's 13 Portraits Hand Colored. Each portrait portrays a different story from the one before it. In portrait one, there are two people in the painting, a man looking off in the distance and another one standing by him in his shadow. The man staring off in the distance does not look afraid, even aware of the presence behind him. To me, that shows how oblivious I can be operating through the world, listening to music in my car on full blast, but not fully aware of what's going on on the sidewalks, the streets I pass, and the surrounding buildings. That plays a big part in why I don't know my way around very well. The man standing behind him has a slight grin as if he is plotting something. This, to me, is the evil voice in the back of my head, the one that convinces me to bring my intrusive thoughts to life, the one that tells me to turn left even though I should have made that right. In portrait two, I can only see half of his face. This, to me, points out insecurity. I still want to be seen, but not so much people judge me. In portraits three and four, he has a cigarette in his mouth. Cigarettes are a bad habit or a stress reliever. In portrait three, he is using that cigarette for his bad habit, but in portrait four, it is to relieve stress. You can tell that by the distressed look on his face. Portrait three reminds me of what my mom would look like smoking her cigarettes, very contently like she is used to it. Portrait four is what I imagine my dad would look like if he ever smoked cigarettes, crying, stressed out, trying to relieve some pressure. He did not indulge in unhealthy habits like cigarettes, so if he ever did decide to light one, I know he would not enjoy it very much. In portrait five, Lance Loud appears to be holding up an empty hanger. For me, this symbolizes how lazy I can be when it comes to laundry. I have empty hangers and clean clothes, but have made no effort to put the two together. In portrait six, there are two people, one of them smiling, the other looking surprised. I interpret this as me and my best friend. She is always the surprise one, and I am the one smiling. From any time I tell her a story all the way to her tasting my cooking, I will always be smiling, waiting for her response, and she is surprised at whatever I just said or did. In portrait seven, he looks as if he is observing his face close, closely. This portrait particularly hits home because I have poor skin. I tend to spend hours looking at my face in a mirror or camera. Although it is better now, it is still not good enough for me. You can still see it without having to pull my face close to the camera or mirror. This is an insecure me, one of the many versions of, my, of me I do not allow people to see. In portrait eight, he looks like he is photographed at a party. This portrait means to me the way you forget yourself when you are having fun. There is no care in the world. You are just living in the moment. Those are the best moments in life because I spend most of my days lost in my head, thinking about things I cannot control. So anytime I can change that narrative, I will. In portrait nine, he has a blank face and seems like he has a lot on his mind. This portrait sticks out to me because like I stated before, I spend my days lost in my head. This portrait is the one I relate to the most because it is even often how I photograph myself with no expression. When I'm in a room full of people, most of the time I'm sitting somewhere staring off into space thinking about something that happened forever ago or probably has not happened yet. I tend to ask myself questions like, what if I said this instead? Or I tell myself I would do it differently next time, but once it arrives, nothing ever changes. In portrait 10, he is back smiling. Based on the last portrait, to me, this seems like a forced smile, like it was only for the painting, painting, then immediately after the smile disappears. This happens to me most of the time at work. I work in customer service, and the jokes people tell me are starting to get old. In portrait 11, the smile looks more natural. The most natural smile I experience is when a random person or someone important to me gives me a compliment, especially when it is about something I was stressing over before leaving the house, I do not receive these compliments often, so that natural smile is not here often either. In Portrait 12, instead of observing himself in like in Portrait 7, he is admiring himself. You can tell by the confident look he has on his face and getting closer to the mirror, he is feeling himself. Even after all the rejections and insecurity, I can still find beauty in it all. This portrait also sticks out to me because it is important for me or anybody to love yourself for first. I spent a lot of my childhood years looking for validation and advice from others, but not anymore. I look up to myself and love myself more than any opinion in the world.